阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥。For, for, uh, good day, everyone. Uh, today we are doing chapter three as usual, part fourteen, cruel and petty, Chinese Buren Su Zi Er. So last week we talked about this too. You know the first two sentences, um, and it fulfills the title, cruel and petty, basically not being kind and being very, uh, how to say. Holding grudges and or not being, how to say, um, big-hearted, uh, and what's the consequences of not having, you know, big-hearted is you do not receive the full merits of your actions in the in the end. In example, you know, regretting after you giving, or never return after you borrow, uh, those are you know, a obstacles towards. You achieving full merits,、um, and only when you actually, you know, at peace with yourself and be content and actually, you know, do things accordingly. You know, be、um, generous, be open, be、uh, honorable, repay what you owed. Only then you will actually receive a well-rounded merits. And asking for merits in return is also a form of、uh, tran- not transgression but imperfections in the cultivation because you're asking something in return. It becomes transactional. It's not genuine assistance. You know, it's not genuine giving. Genuine giving do not think about what do I get in return. This is a business. This is not a, a, a act of giving. It becomes business,、uh, which is not you know, gaining any merits. Real to regret after having given the charity to borrow with the intention to return or repay. So next one talks about you know in Chinese it means that、uh, anything that you ask is beyond what you should be asking. You know you already have、uh, this position or you already have this perks、um, uh, in your current role, but you want more. You're know, always asking for more, also seeking for more outside of what is necessary. All right, what is, um, let's see, what is just nice, you know, for your current life style, for your current level.、Uh, there's no need for you to go beyond that, you know, because those are、uh, external,、um, you know, benefits. Those are benefits、uh, that is.、Uh, Like say you already have a good, you know, income. You already have a well,、uh, you know, funded lifestyle with you know travels and all that. But you want more, or something that is too excessive. We call it excessive enjoyment, excessive、uh, pursuit. Something that is not enriching your character, enriching your quality of life,、uh, but only just to fill in the. Uh, deepest, endless pit of greed, right? You know, you got a million, you want two million, and got two million, you want ten million, and then you use this money only for your own enjoyment, not actually using it to expand.、Uh, you know, the services to actually help other people to provide more.、Um, you know, provide more opportunities for other people to also have a better life. That's different. Yeah, but. If you just use that only for your own enjoyment, you know, at the expense of other, at the expense of public goods, that's what this means. Fen Wai Ying Chiu, right? Like if you're in the position of, you know, having such a huge influence and you're able to do a lot of good with, with this, then you should. That's your duty because you are in charge of of, of such a huge、um, assets and、uh, a lot of people. You will be influence a lot of people. You'll be able to lead them. To better their own life and hence better their own family's life by having a good example, right? 
you can enjoy what you're supposed to enjoy with your own you know perks that comes with your role and position but not always stepping it not over it so know when to stop know when to learn how to give because you already have so much right people who are really rich they will actually give even more rather than take there's no need to take if you're already rich so by this definition we understand rich is not purely just about material wealth and all that because only pursuing that part will make you even more hollow hollow out because all your energy is spent on the outside a person who actually fully rich not just on terms of wealth or terms of you know those material benefits which is important we still need to have a comfortable life but we, we don't want to do it to the point where it's too much for one person to enjoy right how can one person enjoy so much right beyond what they actually need and a little bit of extra right it's not much and beyond that you need to share it beyond that you need to you know you need to create a platform for other people to improve their life as well that's the right way to do it and that's the to be honest that's the way you can actually max increase your happiness because going beyond that beautiful goldilocks zone of you know your personal pursuit your enjoyment your money and all that you've got to have to start helping other people going up the right kind of people attract kind of right kind of people right kind of mindset right kind of principle right and and this can be seen from different examples right someone like Buddha who came from a rich family and now he went into this 100 percent 180 degree change to modern examples of um uh Sorry, I think I'm, I haven't prepared any more examples, but I'm um, pretty sure there are a lot, right? Those um, billionaire or something, they let go of the assets. They're just trying to, um, some of them even become monks or some of them pursue these spiritual pursuits because they understand from that vantage point, you know, having enough wealth is not, having only material wealth is not enough. You know, you got to go beyond. That's the that's the improvements. There's on, there is where we should improve, you know, not just purely on material side. So this case, yeah. See, the English is very good, actually. And fail to calculate the merits necessary to attain them, right? When you reach the advantage point uh, of, you know, you're already at, you know, a very high level of your, you know, achievements materially, and you have all these influence connections and all that, you got to have to do something more than just simply indulging in it. You gotta have to start, you know, bringing in um, ideas and resources to create a new platform for other people to actually grow, uh, to let them have a chance to to have this as well, and that's how you actually improve it. And of course, uh, more even more important is able to let go at the right time, not overly um, engage in it, not attach to the power because influence came with. Inf- came when influence came came power right because you have a sway over someone else action or a group or organization and able to use that properly to benefit the, as many people as possible because of your one word you can influence hundreds or thousands of people that's very important uh, and in Chinese teaching you know we, we also promote traditional Chinese culture let's just always talk about sage kings and all that for re- one reason one reason only because those people are in a very high position of influence you who you might may one day also be one of those people and if you, I have a right kind of mindset you know understand your roots be you know love and respect your parents your family also understand the limits you know what is right what is wrong you know not getting dulled by you know your love for your family or all that you still understand you know what is the right thing to do what is the wrong thing to do despite familiar relation and all that Dai, understand all this and also understand the uh, society you know how complicated it may be you know how to navigate around it with experience with the right kind of friends advice and then with that and then with a right with the ambition in the right place you know put it in the right place that means you're actually servicing people you actually are genuinely want to help people right and as long as you're able to eat enough sleep enough you know 
have place to sleep, have have a food to eat, can con- can survive your body, and you're not too stressed and overly, uh, how to say, depressed or pressured. You will be able to build up. It's like a muscle that right? you build up your um, strength. You know, your um, it's a cultivation. We call it cultivation. You cultivate your uh, merits, so to speak, to get even more merits. And with more merits, you give you more. So examples, Master Ching Kong, right? Master Xing Yun, you know, those great masters, you know, Master Sun Yin, right? And those like Buddhist uh, master, right? They always, they have a lot of merits, right? They have attracted a lot of people, all right? Even more than normal corporation could ever do because they are touching the spiritual realm. And they put their heart in the right place, right? They're always the example, negative example of people using that influence and become a cult. A personal cult and they enjoy themselves a lavish in uh, lust and power in ambition they use that to influence country that, that's twisted so in the right place you can influence a lot of people to do good and what is good right it's just simply live your life as is but improve make it better and better and better or not trying to brainwash or anything it's just trying to uh, give them an options have a better choice a better, better life you know Usually, what you see, they 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 living normally. They're not trying to do some special effects or anything. It does not, uh, how to say, it does not break your day to day routine hundred percent. It it nudges to it towards a better direction. Right? It tells you to be kinder, be smarter, be wiser, uh, make a choice more long term mindset rather than pursuing short term enjoyment, which is what this is trying to advise us against. You know, always chase after one thrill after another. It's not going to help. Uh, this ambition of yours, only with you in the center, is not going to um, last because you will die one day. Your name will gone. Then what's left? Greed, legacy of greed, legacy of hatred. Right, Hitler, legacy of hatred, legacy of greed. Well, there's a lot. But those bankrupt banks, those bankrupt. Uh, politicians, corrupt politicians, or even now, right? These big corporations, they only engulf, engulf, engulf for their own benefits only, even though they have all the resources they can use to help, right? But those legacies are not going to last long. And yes, they can last for many, another couple of hundred years. It's nothing in, in the scale of human history or Earth. But those things will pass. So what what's left? What's be left behind? Right, more destruction, more, 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 more pollutions, more uh, disbelief, more lack of faith, more um, crisis, right? More conflicts. If that's the legacy you're left behind by a country, by a corporation, by a person, then it's a life wasted. No matter how powerful, how influential they are, and this is because they're driven by ambition, but to a wrong end. What is the wrong end, right? Selfish, ultimate selfishness. It does not get anywhere, right? It does not help you to get anywhere. Granted, it's hard to be wholly selfless like Guan Yin or anything. It's an aspiration. But first of all, we need to understand the relationship between self and others. And we need to understand the relationship between merits and faults. And to understand everything like this, you need to understand what is karma, cause and effect. And understand cause and effect will un- ultimately tell you the ultimate selflessness is actually benefiting yourself fully. Out to be fully selfless, you become fully benefited. If you're f- too selfish, all you have is nothing but destruction, but disappointment, because uh, false sense of self. You build a foundation on sand, not on a on a concrete. It will fall. If you build yourself on understand right understanding, you understand the relationship of self and others is very nuanced, very special. It's um, how to say in a bigger way in Buddhist way we call it, you know, um, from attachment to self is is the is the is the starting point. You know, we need to start learning not to lean too much on our five senses. We need to observe ourselves indulging in it and then pull ourselves back or observe the consequences of indulging in this too much you know, in, in, in five senses all sorts of pleasure you know watching too much eating too much 
hearing too much, seeing too much, smelling too much, stuff like that. And also overthinking. Those are excesses and someone got to rein it in. It's going to be you. You got to have to rein yourself in. Right? Allowing to enjoy is like, you know it's, it's too much. It's not going to help you or it's, it's just going to run you dry because your energy is limited. It's like uh, you have to sleep and then wake up. But that's only so much energy you spend on this outputs, which, you know, it's not going to help you in the long run if you only indulge in it. And if you do not have any, you know, anything meaningful to give to others or connect to others, it's it's going to be more and more and more, how to say, exhausted. At the end of the day, your body can't take it anymore or your life is disease and disappointments. So those kind of ambitions, it's built on sand. It will fall apart. What is the right kind of ambition instead? Right? Be careful. This is not talking about don't be ambitious. Don't, don't pursue anything. It's don't go face I mean go to all this trouble all this effort all this ploy tactics machinations only to get more disappointments more pain more sufferings that's called foolish Yu Zi what's the right kind of ambition what, what's the right what, what kind of ambition is considered as worthwhile to chase alright something that moves the strings of thousands of hearts of thousands of people something that brings generation and generations of merits and profits like that other people can emulate you and create even better effect to the world that's the kind of ambition one should have in Buddhism we call it bodhisattva vows right the one that touches your most in the most part of your heart that makes you have infinite energy like a mom who willing to cover herself to protect her daughter in the face of crumbling buildings even though they were trapped for 72 hours the body curled up just to protect the kids you saw that in documentaries right they dig out the mom's dead but the kids still alive or they try to so that level the one that that tap into that level of energy thousands of people right of course we don't do that every day that's too much um, but that's the drive right that drive that mom has to protect her children, right? The, those basics, and we use that in the large scales that makes everyone, how to say, um, makes this society much more bearable. So that's the kind of ambition one should have, one should encourage to have. No matter what field you came in, you can came from different works of life, right? There's so many needs in this world, you can provide different needs as long as it brings people to that point, you know? of being a bigger self if not selfless bigger self and to do that you need to have merits right most people will do this trying to take advantage they're trying to uh, pay less gain more which is like all oh, common sense isn't it but when you realize that you the more how to say tan xiao pian you are the more you're trying to take advantage of others without having to give out your part yourself the more discounted your return is, right? diminishing returns, so to speak, it gets weaker and lesser and lesser and lesser. That's a that's a poor man mentality, if I want to say that, right? The one that squeezes dry the bottom line, right, and then take out whatever resource for their own enjoyment. Those are poor, actual poor man mentality. Right? The one with real wealthy mentality or mentality of a person who can own a lot of merits including wealth right and wealth is one part of merits long life healthy life is a mer another merit having a good family around you good company is another merit right have wisdom is another merit have fearlessness courage is another merit so those are merits can come in many forms right and if you only focus on the material one, it's it's like one your uh, it's like having f five fingers. You only want one of the fingers. It's not going to work. You need the other five to to make a complete life, right? Um, last one is li sang qiu shi shi. So that means within your capacity, you spend hundred percent of your energy 
to pursue your desire without any restraint, right? Without any reflection. You didn't pull back, you didn't reflect, you didn't conserve your energy, you didn't humble yourself, all right? Take three steps back. Allow other people have a go as well. All right? Why do we do that, right? Why, we, why should we 100% pursuing it? Because if you're 100% pursuing desire, you're 100% spending your merits. You leave nothing for yourself to cultivate, right? It's a like bank account. You spend everything, your whole savings on it. You spend, leave nothing to invest, leave nothing to reinvest. You spend 100% only for your own enjoyment or only for your own desires. Leave nothing to, say, invest or in donations or whatever for your say, rainy days. So use that mentality, we will understand why humility is important because it pulls you back. Even though you can, you know, say, show off a certain trait of you, yours, because you have this advantage or you can take full advantage of that opportunity, but you don't allow yourself, you know, put a cart before the horse, so to speak. Um, you don't allow yourself to overdo it so that you can have, uh, you know, have a fallback options. You don't allow yourself to um, go too excessive so that you have, uh, so that you, you you will be able to, um, how do I say, not overdo something, so to speak. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Um, yeah. Well, the way they the way they uh, design, I mean, translate this one means that you push someone else to a breaking point, All right? So how do I explain this? Because one would have different perspective, right? I don't want to make it too complicated, too muddy, but we also need to understand there are very nuances, right? But if you want to put it very clear, if it's something that just benefit yourself, if you 100% pursuing it, leaving no quarters to anyone else to also share in the benefits in 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 reality you only spend your whole merits or you spend your all all your opportunities in one go instead of leaving it allowing to recover to get even bigger next time if you want to think like that uh in this case you know you spend maybe your power to push your subordinates to do work OT or whatever just because you can right no one's restraining you so in return you will get grudges from your uh, people around you because you push them too much and you are not kind and considerate about what they actually need basic needs right rest uh, 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 livable wages and stuff like that all, right? all you do is just in Chinese you know you squeeze them dry you you you, you suck their life out of them just because you want to get your profit right that's one way to, to look at this and de doing this in return you will get retributions which is what this whole book is about right karma right karma comes in many forms right all the benefits you have might be gone in one day tax evasions or your son you know your daughter uh, you know cause some trouble outside you have to spend a lot of money or your son and daughter born to your family with chronic disease. And you have to spend millions and millions of dollars to treat them. So all the money you squeeze from other people, spend it back on your son. You can't gain any advantage in in in, in absolute sense, in, in karmic sense. There's no advantage you can gain over other people. Right? The only real way to gain in the real meaning, the real gain one could have is by cultivating the giving, which already mentioned many times, give of wealth, gains wealth, and wealth comes in two form, inner wealth, I mean, as in your energy, your life force, you, you spend your time, you spend your energy, you spend your um, attention on something, on someone, allowing it to grow into something bigger, maybe an organization, a charity, or a group of people, a relationship of you giving this kind of wealth, you will gain that kind of wealth, you know. Of course, spending money, charity, or 
you know, giving someone else help in need, maybe give them a certain amount just for them to get through the troubles. And of course, this will yield you wealth as well, monetary. So there's two kinds of wealth. And then giving of fearlessness gains long life. That means you are living without fear. You know, you're at peace. And that kind of less stress-free mentality, stress-free lifestyle will yield the long life. If you look at these people who live 105 years old or Master Hai Sin at 112 years old, able to climb trees at the age of 112 to pluck orange or whatever citrus it was growing at the time. That is amazing. And he's a cultivator. His mind is peace. He does not think like us too much. But when you ask him questions, he can answer you so quick, so succinct, straight to the point. That means a high level of wisdom and experience. Like me, if you ask me a question, I keep blah, 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 giving you like an essay about something. That means I haven't figured out through my mind. I'm still confused. You huo. Yi huo. Bu qing shu. People who understand the point straight away give you the point directly, right? And they allow you to think. And then you ask them again. They continue to feed you. Eventually, you find the answer yourself. That's how wise people do it, right? Which is why I, I try to be, but not not there yet for a long like We should all learn to be that person as well, eventually. When you see something so much and learn something so much, you understand the essence of it. You live through it. There's no need for you to to beat around the bush, All right? Be that person. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, those people live a long life. Those people live a good life. You know, they have they have a routine, and their routine is is there, you know, religiously, and it it gives them it's a thing. It's it's a, it's a kind of meditation for their their routine, right? Well, Buddhist is straightforward. It's Chan Amitofo. They always uh, clean the temples. And, and for him, Master Hai Xin in China, he plants trees. You know, he opened, he, he you know, he's 100% agricultural, right? Not just sitting in the room and talk. He's actually doing things physically. That's his condition, right? Master Qing Gong, he cultivates, even though he moves around a lot, you know, his schedule can change a lot. His consistency is, as long as he has time, he chant uh, the sutra and he gives the talk four hours. When he was younger, eight hours. Eight hours, guys. Of course, not in one go. Eight hours, right? When he's like this age, 30 to 40, 50, he trained himself to be able to talk for eight hours. Because Buddhist sutra is very long. You can expand it a lot. And, and then eventually four hours. And that thing has uh, going for four hours for a long time before he has to cut down to two very recently and then one hour in the very end. But for the big chunk of it, four hours, right? He always have that consistency, no matter where he is, Canada, US, whatever. His schedule can be messy, but he can, as, as, as soon as able, go back to that routine. And that becomes a habit. You don't think about it, right? Your mind is at peace. You're not trying to seek this, seek that. You only craft a plan like what he did with Han Institute and all that when he faced a condition like, oh, crisis of faith. People have no faith in the a human can be taught better. You know, people have no faith in the goodness of human humanities because they've seen too much negative example. So show them a good example that forced him to build this initiative in China, you know, have a sample school using that traditional method, you know, uh, lead by example, you know, teacher lead by example, showing a good, like Master Cheng De when he was a lay person, uh, Mr. Chai, and he leads this initiative. So that's how you do it. That's how you build it. That's how you set your ambition. Your ambition not just for yourself, for your own enjoyment. You can have that. But that thing grows all very quickly. You need someone to share with. You know, in the very least, a partner. But that's not enough, to be honest. Just you and her, or you and him. It's not going to go anywhere. Expand it further, like even our our temple, right? Master, uh, Mister uh, J- James and Auntie Cynthia, I know. It's Cheng Cheng Shishong Zhen Tai, right? Zhen Shishong Zhen Tai. So, they are husband and wife. They work like normal, right? And they took time to help the association. Eventually, they let go of the job and focus on this, hundred percent. You know, their children is well taken care of. Their children have a very good career, right? 
this is a living cause and effect for you. You know, doesn't have to be monk. If so, as a lay person, you, you can do that as well with your wife, husband, my like auntie Yenzi as well, right? You and your husband, right? In your own power, in your own conditions, you can do a lot of things. You don't have to let go of your pursuit and career at the first place because everyone has different stages. Right now, I'm still pursuing it. Does not stop me from doing this, but does not stop me from doing meaningful stuff. Right? I can have my own pursuit at the same time. I can use, take out part of my time to do this meaningful stuff that, that, that enriches your own soul or enriches your heart that makes you even better at your career and other stuff. So those things are related. Those are real merits, right? Those are things that actually give you energy because you give, you will get. That's how karma works. You will not give and not get, right? If you define your get in such a narrow way or oh, monetary benefits or something, of course you won't get because you didn't pay attention to what you get. Good companions, good friends, people help you when you need it or things happens your way, it's get. Doesn't have to be money. It can be translated into money, right? I hope we, we can go beyond that narrow definition because this is what wisdom helps us do, right? So it goes to number three, give off you know, wisdom, open up options out of people's life, let them have a broader horizon, let them see bigger, beyond the current circumstances, like education, right? That's the whole point of, the raw point of education is to improve their life, right? And the very least, they allowed themselves to get out of the, 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 the condition they're in. That's what the whole world should, are agreeing on. Education will improve lives. But what kind of education, right? And what kind of improvement are we talking about? If we're just talking about purely just getting better um, house, better cars, those are number one. I'm not saying it's not important. This is a number one. It's not enough to have a better life. A better life is something about have a good sense of communities where you can rely on. And that is a bigger project than just having better house, better car, better salary. Right? You need to have a strong community. That means you need to have a strong education of examples, just like what Master Jing Kong initiated in China. Right? Lead by examples. People actually care for each other. Any errors, bring it out talk about it and people because people don't believe this thing happens so they set up a experimental point in Lujiang China right happens to be one of the strong found uh, strong Confucius based education base since ancient times right since the warring states the, the spring and autumn 2000 years before Christ so yeah So these are real benefits, and this benefit can translate in any way. Even corporates, even profits, those things can. Those things are not mutually exclusive, right? It's just we gotta learn to understand what's a long-term investment in people. Right kind of people in your company will make your company more profits, more wealthy, and because they are the right kind of people, they will use it in the right way. They don't use it to harm. They minimize the harm, right? They will do their best in the ability to minimize the harm, right? And it will create that kind of culture that is more, how to say, considerate, so to speak. Less focused on just chasing the hard, cold numbers. We still need this data, we still need all these things to drive things forward, but we, we, we can make it, you know, that everyone can take it easily. Like that, 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 that actually helps to bring a better culture, working culture and stuff like that. So that's the kind of mindset we should have, right? Like the place where people who are in the bottom rung, they don't felt like like isolated 100%. Even though materially they don't have it much, but they have this sense of communities they can rely on. Or they have their space they can live in, dignity as well, right? And this is cultivated by a compassionate mindset. Right, not competitive, not overly competitive, not overly uh, strong eats the wheat kind of mindset. That thing has to go. Right, if that thing remains, the conflict of the world remains. Right? That's what prompts Shaimuni Buddha not to take the path of kingship 
or emperorship. He will be emperor. I have no doubt. With his wisdom, he can be emperor. Bigger than Ahsoka. I have faith, full faith. He can even reach the expanse in China with his wisdom. He can even go all the way. Maybe not all the way there, but maybe reaching in China and then west into the Middle East. If he wants, it's under his fingertips. Right? Instead of reaching only this patch of land, which is a lot in our sense, he tried to reach the hearts of millions, thousands of not just human form beings, but non-human form beings. Now that's ambition. That's not purely driven by desires. Now that scale that makes even the heavenly beings bow down to him, to treat him as his teacher. That makes even the heavenly people, like those people with a lot of merits that gets there, or in our modern sense, the rich people, right? the wealthy people, powerful people, willing bow, willingly bow down without him asking anything. He's just simply begging alms. Everyone's like, oh yeah. Why? Superstition? Are they stupid? If they're stupid, they won't be, the ho- won't be able to hold an empire won't be able to hold a huge corporation. They're not stupid. Right? They have all the benefits and, 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 and bloodlines of thousands of people at their hand. Why are they willingly bound to someone who has nothing? Or who are they willing to for, for, forgive this thing? Because it was inspired. That's how it works. Use it the right way. Use it the wrong way becomes what you see in the history. Hitler and all that. Use it in the right way becomes like Buddha, Jesus. Right? So this is not the way to do it. Push people to breaking point. Right. So who you, you so so you should flip it around. Push yourself to the breaking point. Of course, give yourself a rest, and push yourself to the breaking point in the sense that you still can maintain it, but you understand you need to go. You need to break through this, which is what Buddha did. He pushed himself to the breaking point. He didn't push anyone to the breaking point. Just, he just need to do it to himself, set an example, and then you say moderation. Moderation doesn't mean you sit there in moderation. That's not moderation, that's lazy. He's still doing due diligence, but he understands extremism of not eating anything, overly, overly ascetic. You know, too much of that part is not going to help your mind work. Too much on enjoying, you know, lust and enjoying power, enjoying pleasure, it's not going to help your mind work. You're distracted. So two sides are not helping. So he went to the moderate path still very diligent still very like close very tightly rhythm like the so it's still very like very routine structure discipline every day wake up it's four o'clock if india break it into four period of time this is how they do it ancient india um, i think even now right they break it into four chunks so so they will say which chang you wake up and begging alms, which chang you come down and have lunch, which chang you meditate, reflect, and last chang you reflect on your past wrongdoing and then you sleep. And they have this routine again and again. And the result is producing people who are enlightened, which is wise people, which will affect thousands of hearts in the future. Right? That means a lot of family, a lot of big empires, kings, right? In modern times, companies, heirs, uh, even the day-to-day people. So, so top to bottom, every level, every class of the society was touched. Right? Benefit from this. This is how it works. This is how merit was made. You actually do it like a, in China, in, in Buddhism, we call it Junzan. The rain from the heaven does not distinguish the poor and rich. It reaches every corner of the beings. Every corner. Anyone, no matter you rich, no matter you poor, no matter you powerful, no matter you not, you will reach, you will receive the rain. You will receive the water and dew from the heavens. That's the kind of mindset we should all cultivate in this society. Tianjia. That's the least mindset, right? Buddha is not just Tianjia, is he's not just thinking about under the heavens thinking about yeah so how do we 
break that? How do you get inspired by that? You know, start by your day-to-day stuff. You know, you don't have to think that far. You just need to be understand where he came from. If not, touch the part where he actually touches. You know, but his example touches people, right? And not just him, but people in your life as well, right? It doesn't have to be that level. It can be day-to-day, right? And you can see what kind of people in your work and stuff that actually give themselves, push themselves to help his friends and colleagues around and customers, stuff like that, even though they don't have to. Those are the people that is inspiring, right? It's nothing wrong to ask for, or for, for, for promotion or anything, but have your own desire while still able to, you know, expand it and include others in your own ambition is very important in and in, in, in enlarging your scope. So that's where wisdom needs to come in. Um, and wisdom cannot come in if you're not willing to share it. You're not willing to open up to your mistakes. Wisdom cannot come in when you stuck yourself in this little corner thinking that that's it. You know? Chinese called Jing Zhuwa frog under the well how big is heaven for them or how big is the uh, sky for them as big as the um, diameters of the wealth or the well they, their, their world is that much right so people who help to spread wisdom is help people to have a bigger sight of life and you can't do that by forcing on them of course in the young age you can tell them to go on, set up a routine, they learn all this Di Kui and all that, you know, how to be a good person. Those things are important, right? We can't just let them free roam like, you know, headless chooks. In the very beginning, you need to learn, you need to structure, be more structured because they are very young, like a young tree. If you don't bring any support around them, they will be bent when they grow up, right? Only time when you can say they be free is when they have a good root and their stock is upright. That's when you don't need the support anymore. Don't over control it. You know, let them be free when they have good foundations. Right? That's the another kind of mindset we need to have as well. Right? Freedom has a cost. If you do not allow this freedom to be directed to the right end, this freedom is gonna cost you a lot. It's gonna cost you everything. Alright? It's gonna cost you disasters. Right? There are many kinds of freedom. The freedom that allows you to grow into um lush tropical jungle or a very good ecosystem or another kind of freedom like wildfire it goes everywhere engulfing properties engulfing animals eating everything in its way all right unfettered desire is like wildfire it goes everywhere it burns everyone it hurts everyone of course in the end of the day you know the trees will grow back and all that but there's another world already you don't want to go through that kind of pain in order to have a better world. We don't want that, right? We don't want to go to World War II again or nuclear apocalypse. This is a very real thing, right? So how do we do that, right? Even though it's very hard, impossible, that's what we have to do in our space. Right? You can't worry about others too much. You, all you can do is take care of what you can in this space. Uh, when opportunity arrives, they give you a bigger platform. That's when you think about others. That's when you think about, oh, I need to take care of more. That's how it works realistically, right? I don't think one person sit there and say, I want to take care of everyone, and then that, and they can't even take care of their own life. That's not, that's not how it works. You know, you you get this part done properly, you got get a bigger piece of place to over uh, oversee, and then you get you get it good, and then you get the whole country and stuff like that, and then you get bigger. That's how you grow. Like I say about roots. All right, I think I go very, very, very um, deep in this. Um, but I hope it touches the psych psyches behind this. Like, why, why do we want to say, uh, what is ambition? You know, what is pursuit? You know, when do we need to limit ourselves? When do we need to be unlimited? So, in conclusion, unlimited wisdom. That's what we want. Unlimited merits, and that cannot happen when we're too distracted by a narrow definition of wealth, narrow definition of what is happy life, which is very focused on external part only. It has to be 
well-rounded, right? And only then you can be unlimited, like the trees that grows all the way to the heavens and last for 200, 300 years. You need to have a good foundations, good conditions. You grow through a little bit of trouble, but not so much that it kills you. Enough to get you up a level and then you get stronger and stronger, supporting other trees to grow, become a forest. That's how it works, right? That's how you become unlimited in our sense. Uh, I'm pretty sure that look at the Buddha's world as well, that he teach one Buddha and then Buddha learn, become Bodhisattva, learn from this Buddha. And then when he fully enlightened, understand the process and everything, he went to the place where they need him, his infinite level of places because we are infinite wandering thoughts, men's infinite sentient beings. Okay, I go too far. And then they grow into their own pure land over there, okay? Same goes for modern world, like small company, doing very well, manage very well, grow into big company. Now I branch out into the baby's company. They have their own crisis, right? But the mother company support them and then they grow as well. Ideally, it's like that, if with right condition. Okay, uh, what else? I think that's it. Let's let let's go. Let's not um, stay too long on that. Uh, it's already nine. Holy moly! All right, let's talk about the first half. We we'll talk about that next week. Uh, to even if we in marriage engage in excess and unrestrained amorous desire. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. One word. Moderation. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, I'm not going to deep in this. Because um, remember, everything costs energy, right? Everything mm -hmm. costs energy. Uh, do it right. Do it the. Uh, do it right. You will. You will get actual reward from it. You will get actual happiness from it because moderation. Do it wrong. Do it like excessively. Or unhealthily suppressing it or something like that you're gonna get trouble right do it right means what we need to be clear about this uh, in the Tai Sang Ga Yin Pian uh, yeah. so first for one person to be excessive in sexual desire right in and engage in the act whether by himself or with people outside marriage we talk about that first we consider in Buddhism is misconduct sexual misconduct from smallest form of penalty right is merit being reduced you're um, you're supposed to get say this level of merit you dropped right and beggars beggar as in actually have a you know um, relationship outside uh, marriage you know sexual relationship outside marriage which is very common right we say oh it's really common nowadays common does not mean right right we have to be careful about this. Common doesn't mean right. We can't control other people, but since we are here on this ship and this boat, and we need to understand what it, this what is this about. It, this is a crucial part of human life. Because Buddha said, if the heart is not filled with sexual desire, we were not born in this realm. I put on person so poor. You know, if this heart of um, this I in this term is not just love, as in pure love is love tainted with desires with sexual desires and hence we have this realm of desire we call it yu jie like this is literally the definition of our existence form of existence here right there are many forms of existence this form is called sexual I mean it's called desire realm and this desire cannot be narrowly confined to sexual desire it can be all sorts of desire but among all sorts of desire, the one that is strongest is sexual desire. And this is because our attachments to our body and our body seeks a lot of pleasure, pleasure from this. And people who liberated from this pleasure, they don't do it by overly suppressing it. That's not helping you. It's going to make you worse. They replace it with chan yue. In Zen, we call it the pleasure of meditative tranquility meditation and that meditation pleasure is not just oh I feel good my bone in, my whole body is like light and peace more than that they literally get the level of pleasure from pure meditative cultivation 
that means a lot of restraint, discipline, but they also engage in meditation for a prolonged period in the right direction, right? They're not attached to form and formless. They will get that level of joy. And that joy can be attained in the first level of form realm. Why do I mention this? Because this is the cosmology. This is the perspective, big picture I want to share from Buddhist point of view in terms of sex. It's not just about those micro stuff we currently facing right now, you know, with the identity and all that orientation stuff. That thing we put it aside, right? We have bigger things to worry, bigger fish to fry, and this is the bigger fish. You can get joy from that level of f- for meditation. That means no engagement in sexual desires, right? And that's how everyone, other than the special method, can should go through, have to go through in order to attain enlightenment. They replace this desire because desire brings happiness, full sense of happiness. I'm saying full sense as in it does not last, right? If it lasts forever, that is real happiness. That's how we should call it. But if it's just happy because you have that excitement and that happiness goes away when the excitement is gone, it's more like excitement rather than real happiness from inside. So it will not help you alleviate from suffering. Instead, it will give you more sufferings. That's a rational mind talking, of course. I'm no saint out on this as well, right? We we, we still need to work on this. So what we talk about in six realms and outside six realms, this is still in six realms, but even in six realms, if you're able to let go of, replace the joy, the joy, the the pleasure you get from sexual conduct, right? By having a pure meditative cultivation. Uh, I, I will get in details of that in the future, maybe um, just read on Chan Yue, right? Just in Chinese, we call Chan Yue. So the joy from, uh, from, from meditation. And if you do it long enough, the result is the world free of this kind of male and female. That means there's no argument about orientation because there's nothing about that. I'm talking about fundamentally, right? There's no something called male. There's no something called female in the world of form rim. They are all one look. You can call them a male each look or female each look. Doesn't matter. That mindset is only bound to this lower rim. It's like animal defining themselves that way. We don't have defining ourselves like that. However, we still do. So, so what I'm trying to say is, this is the big picture on this thing that is very mundane yet something that bounds us to this world um, not just the conduct but also the attachment you know the, the thing we call love um, compassion is the purified form of it as in compassion is you no longer is a reason is a love with uh, wisdom right uh, it does not bound by form. You still can have family, like Bodhisattva appears with family and they still have children and all that in the right way, right? For They didn't do sexual misconduct and everything. But they do not... It's like saying that river water is water, but the sea water is not water, right? So if you only get, get your source of water from, say, a creek compared to a huge lake you know, right? or a huge river right Bodhisattva's joy came from a huge river our our joy only came from a creek and then we define that oh this is how we get joy from but for Bodhisattva he has a lot or a place a, a lot of source to get that pleasure from he does not need to rely on that one thing in fact he understands the dangers of stucking in there because you would get lower and lower into hell realm because sexual misconduct is a huge thing it, it develops into all sorts of unlimited, just like what I mentioned just now, unfettered desires. And that is a bottomless pit that can lead you all the way to Avicii hell. Because of that desire, you may be driven to kill people, harm people, stuff like that. Yeah. So it's very dangerous. Um, manage it right. You have a happy family if you are choosing a lay person's life, right? And if you have a higher aspiration and you have a good condition as well, you'll be, you don't have to pursue this path. You can pursue the path of monastics. All right. There are people who do that, Buddhist 
minorities, right? Minorities, right? But normal everyday people, most of us, we might have family and we right to have family. And if we have family, we should engage in uh, sexual conduct that is within marriage or within one partner that is your legal wife, right? I know some Catholic saying like that, We in this point we align, right? But at the same time, right? What about now? What about this world we're having? You know, this is not that kind of world anymore. Wedlock is common thing, you know. Of, of course, there are very traditional families of that. So what can we do? All we can say is you can lighten the impact, you know, by not going around and do that. You understand this is a serious relationship. You're going in there. You're trying to have a serious connections, you know, heart to heart. And you understand them. You understand the family. They understand you as well. You really know that person, not just driven by pure desires. And you build that strong foundation on that relationship. That means you build a strong foundation in your life and their life and the life around people around you, your friends including. And then you have this kind of conduct together. Even though it's the technical misconduct, it's more stable. Right? And then you build into marriage. Proper proper um, alliance in the sense, so to speak. And then you have a healthy structure for the family. All right. And while still you derive pleasure from this by act, uh, activity within husband and wife. But in this in this translation, even within marriage, I will bring an example right, without saying too much. Why? Why can't we have a fun with that, even with my wife? You're rightfully so, you can. But a prop with your husband, with your wife. Because, let me bring you a story first from 1930s, right, in nationalist China, right, in China. And there was a master called Master Ying Guang, I think in the circle of Amitabha Pyo Lan, it's common. Everyone knows them. I think in China, a lot of Buddhists know them. He's a great master, enlightened one. He promotes Buddhism, Pyo Lan form of Buddhism especially. Master Ching Kong's uh, teacher, Mr. Li, one of the teacher, Mr. Li, being none, is his student, a uh, lay, lay student, all right? And Master Ying Guang has a, a lot of correspondence with the lay Buddhists at the time. At that time, there's no email, so they use uh, letters and they say, ask a lot of questions, like what we do now with, you know, Venerable Cheng De, Venerable Wu Ling, Venerable Master Ching Kong, he, he was here, and Master Wu Xing and etc. etc. Right? Q and A. So they send a question to him and all sorts of questions with how do I handle my uh, you know, my name for stuff, or my chanting stuff, how do I handle my family? So one of the questions talks about, you know, sexual conduct within marriage. Of course, if they talk about sexual misconduct, which is common, which is obvious, uh, we shouldn't do that. But what about one within the marriage? All he say is, of course, a normal husband and wife would have that, right? Because this is one of the things you, how you create children. And then those are rational part. And then also, you know, in the right amount, of course, not too much, you won't hurt your body. So we're talking about health. And if you're too much, you're going to spend your energy too much. Of course, you will know that. So another thing is, it's dangerous to do it while you're sick. If you're too sick, so there is a Ju Si, right? There is a lay Buddhist who would write a letter say, um, yeah, well, we do a lot of that and my wife and stuff like that, but he's sick. And Master Ying Guang say, you should not do that when you're sick because you're going to hurt your body. Your body needs recovery. You shouldn't do this kind of uh, energy, uh, energy, like high energy stuff when your body is weak. It's like trying to climb a mountain when you're like feverish. But this is way more than that. You're creating people. So, so to speak. So that is one point, right? Another point is um, when he visited him, when he say, asked this the first time, he listened and he say, let's hold it off, a rain check on that, right? Uh, next time in future. So after that, he came back and I meet Master Ying Guang and Master Ying Guang uh, was like, maybe he didn't listen to everything because you can see his energy is very low. That means he, he still have that sickly look, but worst, he still do that despite he has 
a lot of disease, uh, like he has conditions in his body, uh, medical conditions. But he, because as a monk, it's something you don't just say out loud like that. It's a bit awkward, of course. Um, so he feel awkward saying about that. So he just hinting, like, you know, everything we need to have moderation. He just stop it at that. He didn't go too much in detail. But after that, there is, when he go back a few more days, a few more weeks or a few more days were gone, there is the news of, uh, you know, obituary for this lay Buddhist came to his doorstep and say, oh, this um, one of these good, venerable uh, lay Buddhists has passed away. And he's like, oh, I should have warned him directly, frankly, one-to-one, you know, when when I have a chance not just being beat around the bush um, because it's awkward. Even if it's awkward, it saves his life, right? If he can stop doing that just for a few weeks, just recover, and then whatever, he can do whatever when he recover. Mm-hmm. If he can just take a pause of doing this, you know, sexual conduct, when he's sick, he might save his life because this is a very energy exerting stuff, of course. Um, so this is one point of you know excessive uh, sexual conduct, right? And that's why there's moderation of everything. And joy should not just derive purely on that. This is just an act. Like I say, every deed came out from thoughts, from intention. And if the intention is, how to say, is pure, that conduct does not have to go that way, right? Even in the right context, like husband and wife, it can be done. It shouldn't just purely just about that. It's emotional connection as well. I don't want to go too much in this, but it's also important to know, right? Because target can be the young people as well, even the elderly people, right? They will understand when they get into that point of life, they will be more about family in you know, connection rather than just that. But in Buddhism, what do we talk about this? We talk about this because this is blocking us from focusing on actually going back to pure land or actually attaining enlightenment. And I, like I mentioned, you want to improve your existence, your literal existence, your energy, your form of being from desire realm to form realm. This is the latter approach, one by one, one by one. You need to let go of this. This is number one. So other than ego, sense of self, uh, false sense of self, jian, you need to break down what I, you know, those attachment to body, the desires and all that. That's why Buddha start with that, because that's the hardest thing to let go. And then the rest can you can slowly let go, simmer it down. All right. And that's um, in pure land practice, even though we can just chant Amito for but we still need to focus on Amitofo, not be distracted by this, right? It's hard, it's, um, how to say, it's all about concentration. If we can concentrate on cultivation, letting all this part go, only then we can have guarantees to go to Pure Land. If we can sustain that concentration for a long time and strengthen the willingness, desire to go there, see? Desire to go there, right? It has to be stronger than desire to do this. And 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 then your heart, you know, wanting to help more sentient beings to be liberated from these sufferings. We can go deeper on this next week because this is a huge thing, and we should not be shy away from this now nowadays, right? We may be shy away in these communities, but the wider world does not care. And because of that, and because of me as a lay person, I can say that properly, and also at this age as well, very dangerous, easily swayed by this kind of thing. Uh, we need to work on how to manage our relationship with this kind of act uh, and in the modern context as well, right? In the end of the day, we always need to think about what is the consequences, right? You can have pleasure, you can feel like you know, you're the most um, charming person in the world, able to get a lot of people to do this with you and some people are proud of that. Of course, we still think this is disgusting in the general world, in the wider world. I'm not talking about just Buddhist community. In the wider world, we still think this is not right. But there are people like that, right? Of course, we understand this is not happiness. This is just flattery. It's false flattery, you know, ego, 
empty ego. Real one is actual connection with your partners and all that. And they actually really want to be alive with them. Okay, that's right. That's the right path. That's the better path, right? There's a more stable path, not destructive towards yourself and other people. Because there's another problem of abortion as well, see, in other sensitive topics. Why? Because unfettered sexual desires. Unfettered. And abortion, no matter what spectrum of argument we have, is an act of stopping something from growing. I'm using a very neutral word. No one can deny it. You're stopping something from growing. And that something happens to be a children or pre-children. I don't care where, what form of argument it is. It's meant to be a children and stuff like that. Using whatever explanation we have to justify stopping that thing from growing because we cannot bear the consequences of having sexual misconduct or sex, unfettered sexual conduct is irresponsible. It's like saying I spend a lot of money on my credit card on something because I like to do it on LV bags on fancy cars but I can't afford it so I spend it on credit now the credit is coming fruition you're telling me I can just cut off the credit just like that in financial world what does that mean because I work in there right what does that mean that means bankruptcy in worst case of course they can write you off you can escape but your habit brings continues you continue to incur more problems and borrow from loan shark now this time they don't give you that kind of benefits because they don't care they are gangsters right they can cut you in half if they want to right they're not like banks or the proper institution they just say oh okay I'm gonna write you off as bankrupt go away right so consequences is there no matter you cut it off or not cut it off right you abort or not abort it doesn't matter you win the argument you do it consequences is very obvious one is your health next time you want baby you might be harder to get one that's the truth that's medical don't care what you identify as right your body cannot take this too much it's gonna hurt you next time you actually want a baby then you have a problem and in this I'm pretty sure that in the spiritual world vengeance turns into vengeance because we believe in cause and effect Right? Stopping someone from becoming a human when they have that right condition is causing them to be angry, of course, because they might be able to cultivate. They might be able to be a good person, you know, a very important person, They're able to bring fortune to you as well. Of course, it would be hard for you to take care of them when you grow up. That's the point of argument. Why do I have to go through all these sufferings? It's a shortcut mindset because there's no karmic understanding. Come understand it's not religion. It's like paying debt. It's a basic fundamental understanding of how human world works. You owe people, you pay people. You don't owe people and not paying them. And expanded horizon, you will pay them even though you die. Because your form does not rest, stop forming after you die. You will continue paying it until you pay out every single repayment and interest. Right? You cannot escape from that. This is something I need to stand very, very clear on this. Cannot escape from this. Right? The suffering you have right now will be multiplied. You can take it as a fool's word or anything because concept is different, mindset is different, but it, it will it will strong and strengthen. If you go through this path, of course there are people who will help or not. I can say that, right? It's a very hard life and sometimes because unfettered can be happening within marriage. They say even within marriage, and you keep giving birth to children, you can't feed them, right? And then they naturally pass away and all that. That's one. That's another business, okay? They don't have that long life or good condition. And of course, we still need to control it. But the condition of this, you know, within your body that you can control is another matter, right? So just like my credit card analogy, you owe something, you pay something. Right? If you're willing to spend that, you need to be willing to pay for it. Otherwise, that will incur even more interest. So paying after the expiry, they will incur 20% interest. Unable to pay will incur a future blacklist in your credit report. I use a very crude way to say it, straightforward. 
no longer be able to borrow money for bigger purchase that will yield you bigger gain. That means you stop yourself from bigger merits until you clear this debt. So this debt will not go away, it will mark on you, right? Not until you die, until you pay it back, even after you die. Because you were born just for the purpose of paying it back. That's the point of view that Buddhist teaching will bring in to this argument. Not just purely about religion, about you know what, what they saying. Because this, this is a fine argument, but it's not strong enough. You need to be strong enough. Debt must be paid. Now this kid's supposed to be paying the debt. Now you stop them from doing it. Oh, I don't believe it. Doesn't matter. Look at your body. Next time you aren't able to have children, or your children that second children that you actually want have more diseased because your body is not in the right place. The incubator is not correct. The, the, the system, the environment is not in the right place. Of course you will hurt. And, and then you will feel the pain. You're like, oh, I actually want this and now it becomes weak because of this. It hurts both the person who do it and the person who are being done by it, including the father as well, right? Or mother, doesn't matter. All right. Yeah, in one word, consequences, moderation, right? Consequences, moderation. You want a happy life, you still can have this conduct inside a stable relationship, preferably should be marriage. Well, I still have to encourage that, be in marriage, because you guys are locked in, you're actually serious about this. Whether it works or not in the end, the condition of law is fine. Right now, you're actually serious about it, you're not trying to play around, and you do this because you actually cherish each other's, that's fine. Right, I'm talking about lay Buddhist perspective, but you want to get out six frames. This needs to let go as well. Eventually, um, it will be when you like 20, 30 years in it. You won't be just doing that. You will have a lot of commitments, home loans, and all that. Worry about, and then eventually you want to get out of six frames because the kid is giving you headaches. No, maybe uh, you know, not like that. Yeah. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. Um, in fact, next one should belong to another sentence here. So it has nothing to do with this. Uh, so that's it. That's the end of this uh, verse 66 of Treaties and Response and Retributions. Uh, yeah. Thank you for uh, going through this with me. Uh, it's going to be one and a half hour almost. We'll end this here by 10 times Amitofo and Dedication of Merits. Uh, let's do the merit first. May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, and leave the teachings for the rest of this life, then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. A mi to for A mi to for A me 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 to for